only minor motions. But towards the end of this sequence, we're going to see another blast off the left side. And it's so big, even behind the limb, that its shockwave got sent through the corona and onto the Earth-facing side, replaying the ripple of the shockwave here. Folks, while the CME we saw yesterday was very dense, this one is very fast. Fastest component clocked at over 1,800 kilometers per second by cactus, and that's fast enough to cause major geomagnetic storms if it had been aimed our way. The firing line turns towards the limb today, and visibility for us here on Earth should occur by early next week. Let's slide into the science easily here with some multi-wavelength shots of galaxies from the ESO. It's revealing the stars, the ionized gases, and the molecular neutral gases. These are using ESO, Gemini, and others to create the composites. For everything amazing you see when you put your eye to a telescope, it's merely a fraction of what's really out there to be seen. Let's go next to the Global Climate Report for June, where we've been hearing on the news it was the hottest June ever, but a proper comparison to the last 30 years suggests what Dr. Spencer suggested. We were indeed a fraction of a degree below the 30-year average marks. Link is below, and if you investigate yourself, you'll see how they turned blue areas red or whited them out. Folks, we saw funky data trends in the early part of the year, and they just happened again. We have been tracking the Earth rotation glitch that has their forecast for the year's fastest day pushing back and getting faster and faster. And then last night, they knocked the whole thing off the table and said, no, we've already had our fastest day already. It was that day in July, and it wasn't actually as fast as those previous predictions. Folks, this is exactly what they did earlier in the year as well when the data became preposterous. Just knocked it right back off. And there's no real way for us to know if this was legitimate or not. On to our top two stories. And the first one requires you having been a diligent observer at least the last month or so since the video we had called You Don't Know Nova. Folks, if watching a classical nova being reclassified into a dwarf nova doesn't belong on the list of Nova-level surprises that demonstrate how little they fully grasp the cosmos, then I'm a green-haired honey badger. Last but not least, a section of sediment pulled from the southern tip of South America dates from 33 to 55,000 years ago. That means they better have both Le Champ and the Mono Lake Magnetic Excursion in there. It's exactly what they do find, and also have marks in the data for the 6,000-year Heinrich half-cycle, but they don't use that name. And folks, to this day, I still hear two incredibly false things about the magnetic changes happening on our planet. First, it's that the magnetic reversals only come every few hundred thousand years. Well, that's the full cron reversal, not the fast flip excursion. Those happen much more regularly. Second, I still see comments about the last magnetic excursion on Earth being Le Champ, 40 something thousand years ago. I don't know any clearer way to paint it, folks, starting at the bottom. It was the Vostok Greenland event, then the Le Champ event, then Mono Lake, Lake Mungo, and Gothenburg. Mono Lake and Le Champ in this last paper. The magnetic excursion cycle is a double of the 6,000 year Heinrich cycle at 12,000 years. We're due up again right now, with Earth's field, not one to be late or shirk its responsibilities, beginning its core shift already.